everyone welcome to my channel if you're new or welcome back if you're not so for today's video I'm gonna be doing another brush cleaning chats and um, if you're new to my channel or maybe if you even if you're not that new to my channel because it's been a while since I've done one of these but basically it's just a chatty video while I clean my makeup brushes these are my kit brushes that I have to clean so if you have brushes that you need to clean as well which is a good time to actually do it um, grab those and we can clean our brushes together and just have a bit of a chit chat and um, if you saw the title and you came here looking for a video about brush cleaning I do have one of those and I will link it up in the title up here where I talk about what I use to clean my brushes and stuff so yeah it's been a while since I've done one of these I think I've only done maybe two or three but it's something that I like the idea of just kind of like a catch-up I like watching catch-up and chit-chat videos but I like the idea that it's specifically while I'm cleaning brushes while you're cleaning brushes and just making it nice and relaxed but anytime I think to myself oh I should film one of those I just feel like I have nothing to say I have no news which is very very Irish but also very me when people ask me have you any news even if I do have news I just feel like oh they won't care <laughs> and I just say no not really but yeah like talking and stuff is, isn't one of my strengths because I just feel like I don't know it's a, it's a probably like a self-esteem thing but I feel like what I have to say doesn't really matter or like people won't really care and not in like a depressing way it's just I just don't think to think that what I have to say is, is interesting um my mom is the absolute opposite she could talk for Ireland or America which is where she lives but she um that's something that we experience all the time when we Skype because she lives in America we Skype every week and no matter what no matter what I have going on or no matter what she is going on I could have done loads during the week she could have done very little during the week she will always talk twice as much as I would like I'll give her my news and it might take me depending on what it is it could take me half an hour and then I'll say so what's been going on with you and even if it's barely anything she'll be able to talk about it for an hour which I wish I had the ability to do Um, I try and work on it especially when I'm um, Skyping with her because I like to share it with her as much as she shares with me but um, I actually have to push myself to think about the details and actually share those little details so anyway I'm gonna try and chat to you today so my news at the moment or my most recent news um if you follow me on social media you might have already seen um but I won a national award for makeup which I I'm still so thrilled about and it was such a surprise and I was just super happy about it and super grateful so the Irish makeup awards were on um for me filming this would be about a week and a half ago it was the 15th of July a Sunday and they were on up in Dublin so there was like an awards night with a dinner and presentations and stuff and um yeah I'd been nominated I didn't even I actually didn't even know it was happening because it was the first year of the Irish makeup awards they'd done the Irish beauty awards where it incorporated um everything nails tanning all that kind of stuff um but because the makeup industry is growing so much and it's growing a lot in Ireland as well they decided to just do a specific Irish makeup awards um so I was nominated for um bridal specialist in the south which was a really huge deal for me just to be nominated I was so thrilled when I saw that and I was just looking forward to the awards night as like a night out and something special and just to celebrate being nominated um so myself and my fiance I always say boyfriend I have to think and say fiance even though it's been seven months now that we're engaged um, and I'll talk to you about wedding planning in a minute but um yes yeah, so myself and my fiance went up to the awards he was really so proud of me and he was excited to like do something like that for me because we've gone to awards nights for the GA for him and he's won awards and stuff so he was super excited when I said we were going to go up for the awards night and he was black tie so he rented a tux so we went up and we arrived in the afternoon and got something to eat and then um, we watched the hurling that was on that day and headed up to the room and I basically started getting ready and gave myself a few hours while Christopher watched the World Cup final that was on at the time and even though I gave myself a couple hours I still managed to be like rushing getting ready getting getting like dressed and stuff because I was just focusing on my makeup which I will insert a picture of now um I had a purple dress so I like just did purples on my eye and a bit of glitter but I just really took my time and enjoyed it and everything because of course the event that was in it people would be looking at your makeup when you're talking to people and stuff so when we headed down we um checked in and found what found out what table we were sitting at and then as you walk through um there's a photographer there that'll take your picture and there was a bar at the front so we got a drink and then we went in and sat down and we were the last two to sit down at our table um and there was a girl and her fiance as it turned out that were sitting next to me um and it actually turned out that they're also getting married in may we're getting married next may and they were getting married next May. So that was funny um and she was a really lovely girl from dundalk and he was lovely too so it was nice for my 
fiance to chat to another fella because he was they were the only two fellas at the table there were six other girls i think on the other side of the table so yeah they gave out half of the awards um so there's all different categories from like special effects makeup to um like semi-permanent makeup um and i think lash extensions um one of the girls from cork that does lash extensions who i've done her makeup a number of times she won i was delighted for her and they had them divided up regionally so there was like south um midlands a few a few other categories and then they would do an overall winner as well and stuff so yeah they gave out half the awards and then we had dinner so it was a three course meal and my category was in the second lot so i was waiting um but i was i genuinely wasn't expecting anything i was just enjoying the night out and being there um but my boyfriend was telling me after or my fiance whatever my boyfriend was telling me afterwards that he was super nervous he was just he really wanted me to win bless him he was so proud of me and he said he was so nervous and then he was out at the bar and he was talking to a girl that I know um, and that it turned out that he knew her husband but anyway he was he was chatting to her at the bar and she was just telling him that it was a, pr a very prestigious um category to be in that she she was up for um special effects and like that she was saying she was just happy to be here she was enjoying the night and she was saying god if I was up for bridal I'd be a nervous wreck so when he came back in he obviously didn't say that to me but he was like even more nervous then he told me afterwards and I thought that was really sweet of her too so yeah we had a lovely meal and then um they did the second lot and I won my category which was um south bridal makeup specialist so I walked up on stage and got my certificate and Christopher filmed a bit of that for me so I'll insert that now and i actually have it there i'll show you so this is a certificate i put it just in this clip frame but it's just really nice to have um i still must hang it up on the wall here in the studio but yeah i am i'm really really happy um to have it and i'm really proud of myself so when i got the award on stage there's a photographer and she took my picture with holding the certificate and i got that picture and i put and i put it in a little frame and i put it on our mantelpiece because on our mantelpiece on the left side um there's a picture of christopher receiving player of the year um for the day and he has like three trophies and five medals and then on the right side there was a picture of me getting my BA degree from UCC and then just another picture of just me in my like cap and gown and stuff so it was nice to be able to add to my little achievements on that side and then in the middle we've um, a picture of us when we got engaged so it's just like our little achievements on our mantelpiece in our home and it just made me so happy to be able to add to that and it's something just that I'm super proud of myself and I know Christopher was really proud of me for it as well and like as soon as I won I took a picture when I got back to the table I took a picture of the certificate and I sent it to um like my friends and family and they, everyone was so happy and so supportive and thrilled for me and yeah it was a lovely night it's been a great bit of news to be able to share with people because it's actually something that it's like oh, okay this is actual news so yeah that was a lovely weekend we stayed overnight at the hotel and then the next day we went to Dublin Zoo and then came back down so other than that really there's not a whole lot going on um tipping away at the wedding planning I kind of go in phases with it I will do lows and then I'll get kind of overwhelmed or I'll be like waiting on responses and I'll kind of get out of the flow of it and I won't do anything then for ages so there was a period there where I had inquired I think about cakes um and I got a few quotes back and then I I wait around like to discuss them with Christopher but sometimes our work schedules kind of clash and we don't really have time to act, like sit down and go through things for a while and then maybe when we do we might we might be in the mood or we might be tired so that will kind of drag out the process um so yeah i kind of go in phases but recently i've kind of gotten a few things done where we've gotten a few things done in fairness to christopher he has been um quite involved i know some um guys just don't really get involved in the whole wedding planning they leave that to the to the girl but from the start he has been very involved and he's been wanting to be involved and you know it's his wedding too which i love too because it feels like it's ours and these are the things that we want together as a couple that's the whole point so we have our date we have our church we have our venue for the reception we have a guest list we're having kind of a smaller um wedding we're looking at like 100 110 we have our photographer and a videographer i have always wanted a videographer i know it's kind of a I think that people either just do or don't go for or do or don't want but yeah I'd always wanted one to be able to look back because I'm that kind of person that I love to look back at like I will always look back at home videos I look back at old pictures I love reminiscing and that kind of thing and reliving things and I apologize if you can hear that noise that is the rain it sounds 
louder on this um, steel roof so but yeah I apologize for that background noise now or maybe it's relaxing maybe it's like nice rain in the background it's relaxing so anyway yeah I always, I always wanted a videographer and I have heard from people that didn't have one that it was like the one thing they wish they did that they had one so they could look back on it and uh, we have our band for the reception we have our music for the ceremony and we actually have our um pieces picked out we did that just the other day um i have my dress i got my dress in may because my mom came over we organized for my mom to come over so that number one she could celebrate our engagement with us because we once we knew she was coming over um and my brother could come over because he lives in england we decided to plan an engagement party on the date in may that would be our date next year so we could actually say like on this day next year we'll be getting married so it was kind of late after our actual engagement which was at christmas um to have the party but it was special to wait to have um my mom there and my brother there um but the other reason um we organized for her to come over was so that i could do some dress shopping with her and have her be a part of that so i made my appointments and everything um i think i had four appointments in total and it's <laughs> really hard <laughs> um at every appointment at every place i had a new favorite so then um it was the fourth appointment that i found my dress um and i kind of just said because i just felt like you could you could shop forever and you could look forever you could go to all the different shops in cork i could go up to dublin look at more shops and it it does get overwhelming um especially because you have to kind of use your imagination a little bit because things obviously don't fit perfectly on you they will be fitted to you but like you'll try something on and they'll say okay now just imagine that this is tighter here and looser here and imagine that these straps are up here and and it can be a little bit hard and then you're kind of going off of something that's just in your brain and then a lot of the places don't allow you to take pictures which makes it even harder because then you really are just going off a memory of what it was like on you not every shop was like that uh vows in cork wasn't like that they they say they don't mind and it actually doesn't make any sense to me because the thing is that they say, oh, well, it's the, the designers that don't want you to take pictures so that you can go um, to a dressmaker with a picture and say, can you make that? But that doesn't really make sense because there are pictures of the dresses online already on their websites and stuff. So, yeah, I don't get that. So anyway, yeah, I did. I found it quite hard and it just got to the point where each favorite that I had in each shop, I would love them. Um, but there'd always be like a but and I'd want to have something changed, which also makes it hard because... You'd say that, you'd say, I like that, but I'd like to change this. And then they would say, well, that could be done. And it's like, you've so many options then. So I found this dress. I tried it on the first time and I wanted to keep, I, I loved it, but I wanted to try a few more. And then it was a case of, okay, I think that one was my favorite from this shop. So I tried it back on and then I had to think back to the other dresses and I thought, okay, I think this is my favorite dress so far. And at the time it was good as it was. There wasn't really any changes I wanted to make. There was one thing that I had asked about and he was able to like physically make the change there and then so I could see it. Um, and actually since buying it, there, there is one little thing that I think I'll, I'll change as well. But um, yeah, it just got to the point where I was like, okay, I have to make the call now. And I got, I got quite emotional and it wasn't even like, because it wasn't the first time I tried it. I tried it on already. I was like, yeah, I like it. Let's keep going. But it was when I kind of in my head was about to say, okay, this is it. I started tearing up and I started like crying. And it was a mixture of happiness with the dress and also like relief of just like okay i can let all this kind of like anxiety and overwhelmness go so yeah i love my dress i haven't seen anything like it um the shop that i got it in actually the reason i booked the appointment there was because the dresses that i had seen from there weren't like anything i had seen in any of the other shops a lot of the shops will stock um some of the same designers and you'll see similar styles and stuff whereas these ones were quite different so yeah, that was a big one to tick off the list, have the dress. I have the flowers booked. I don't have like my flowers like selected. I don't know what I'm having yet, but yeah, that's booked. I have the invites done. Um, I have someone booked for hair. I have someone booked for makeup for my bridesmaids and my mom and maybe my stepmom if she wants it. Um, But I'm going to be doing my own face. People are asking me that a lot, you know, about whether I'll be doing my own face or if I'll, or who I'll have to do it. Um, but yeah, I, I never get my makeup done, so I wouldn't like to do it for such an important event, even though obviously I would have a trial and stuff, but I love doing my makeup. I really enjoy it. And also it means I can do as many trials as I want over the year and have it like nailed down to a T, but also at the same time, there will be someone there, um, the artist who I know, um, 
just in case if something isn't going wrong, if my lashes isn't aren't sticking down or if my liner is going wrong, there will be a, another artist there who I can say, can you fix this for me if I need to, if things are going wrong or if I'm panicking. Um, I just had to change the battery, so if the angle slightly changed, that's why. Um, I just booked someone for the cake, so I don't have that like, designed or picked out or anything just yet. Um, what else have we done? We have our pre-marriage course done and we have our registration done. So which would be like, um, you get your marriage license. So obviously that's very important to have done and you don't need to have done that done for quite a while, but it was something that we could do now. So we ticked it off. So what's next on the list um, is bridesmaid dresses and um, Christopher's suit and his groomsmen suits. Transport, so like booking a car to take us to the church and to the reception. Honeymoon, we haven't booked anything yet. So that's kind of where we're at with wedding stuff. Um, it's very exciting. When when things are going well and once I've like started the ball rolling again, like I got back to the people who I had gotten quotes from and I booked a few things, it does feel good to get the ball rolling as I say. So that's that. Um, something that kind of was going on recently that I actually missed out on for the week that it was happening. I was kind of living under a rock I guess but um, and this kind of pertains to Ireland but um, there was a lot of drama um, going on about Inglot Ireland which is different to Inglot International because Inglot Ireland is a franchise here so it has different owners and it's run its own way but I've kind of been getting a lot of questions about it because I used to work there but um, basically there were two artists who left there recently and then came out I guess with their stories or their experiences which um, weren't very good. I actually didn't see their original stories or their original own experiences but they started getting DMs from past and current employees with their own negative experiences and things that were going on and they were sharing them on their Instagram stories and they're still on their highlights. So somebody actually said it to me when I was on a job. Um, I was doing a call out and I had my case with me and my case has an Inglot branded on it because I got it when I worked there. Um, and they said, oh, are you with Inglot or were you? And I said, no, I was, I'm not anymore. And they were like, oh my God, have you seen all this stuff on Instagram about it? I can't believe it. And I didn't know what she was talking about at all. So I went and looked it up and I saw all the stuff. And then it's funny, since then I looked it up, every person I, I meet was like, oh my God, did you see that? What do you think? Was it like that? What, you know? So if if you aren't from Ireland or if you don't had, didn't see what was going on, it was just a lot of negative experiences people had working there, people were having working there, um, from issues with like their coworkers to issues with their managers to issues with the owners or like area managers and things like that. Um, just basically airing all their grievances. Um, some stories were really awful to read and to hear that you know things were happening to people bullying and stuff so um i worked there for two years from 2014 to 2016 sorry there's something stuck oh, i think there's gel liner in this foundation brush how annoying um yeah i worked there for two years i started as a temp and i was for christmas and i was asked to stay on so i stayed on um and then during that year i was made senior artist and then the following year I was made supervisor and then I stayed as supervisor but I was also given the role of um, the in-store trainer for my store and then I left. So basically people have been asking me was it really that bad because a lot of these stores are really shocking and the answer is for me no. That's obviously not to say that anyone's lying because everyone's experience is different but for me no. Or they'll say, um, God, were you surprised or were you shocked? And the answer is no. Um, because I could definitely give you stories of like things that happened that pissed me off or hurt me or made me cry or, you know, or that I saw pissed off my coworkers or hurt my coworkers or whatever it was. But I won't because that was two years ago that I left. So it was actually only when I was reading the stuff that I was like, oh my God, that's awful. And then I was thinking, about anything that had happened when I was working there and then I started remembering things and going god yeah I was really upset about that or I was really pissed off about that or I cried that day or whatever it was but I had to think to actually remember them so they're, so they're not like things that sit with me and then I'm still annoyed about so I'm not going to get myself annoyed about it and like share things just to join in on a bashing um so yeah I I chose to leave for um different reasons but the main reason I left was just it just wasn't the job for me anymore um I'm not 
made for sales and it is a retail position. For me, artistry is just where my heart's at. I just want to do people's makeup. I don't mind what you buy. I don't care what you buy. Once you're once you're happy with how you look, that's my that's the job that I want. Um, and also at the time, my freelance business had been growing while I'd been working there. So I kind of just decided to like focus on my clients and grow my business. But while I was there, as time went on, I definitely started enjoying it less for those reasons. But also there were things that happened, but there was no like big blowout. And I, when people ask me like, do you miss it? I always say, I miss the girls. I don't miss the job. So I worked with a great bunch of girls. Um, I worked with different um, versions of the staff group as people joined and people left. Um, because Ingot does have a kind of a quick turnover for staff, which take from it what you will. But I think I was lucky in the shop that I was in and the girls that I were with, we always got on well. Um, of course, you're gonna have people that you gel with better than others and people are gonna do things that rub you up the wrong way. And But that's just work life, that's just life. But yeah, I think I was pretty lucky and probably luckier than I realized um, now reading some of the stories that were coming out of um, other stores and stuff. And I think from what I hear, the kind of bitchiness and stuff, tends to be worse in Dublin rather than Cork. I think in Cork we're just more laid back or something. But I think in general, whether it's in retail jobs or in freelancing, it's more, I don't know, bitchy, competitive in Dublin. Um, so for example, here um, in Cork, if I can't take a job, um, a makeup job, I have no problem recommending other artists. Whereas apparently um, you don't really get that much in Dublin. They don't really want to pass on business, which I get too, but, but yeah, I think we're just more relaxed here. And another reason I say that is because I remember a day that I was, when I was in Inglot, um, and Jane was visiting, and we knew she was visiting, so um, we had the place spick and span and everything, all the stock was done and everything. But then you're kind of looking for things to get, to look busy and to do something, um, so you're not just standing around. So all my brushes were clean and I had them like tucked away. So I went over to my friend and I started helping her with her brushes as we would if we had nothing to do and, you know, you just talk to someone as you're cleaning their brushes and helping them. Um, so Jane was there and she came over to me and she would normally do like a random spot check of someone's brush belt to make sure that they're clean but also to make sure you don't have any non inglot brushes in your belt which I never did and I always like to keep my brushes clean when I gave my belt back when I was leaving <laughs> the girl the girls were saying oh my god I can't believe how like it was it, loads, loads of the brush belts were all like bent up and bent over and mine was like so straight and like clean and neat but that just keeps me keeps my mind clean when I can see that it's clean so anyway, Jane came over and she was like, oh, Christine, can I um, have a look at your brush belt? And I was like, oh yeah, no problem, I'll just go get it. And then she was kind of looking at me like confused. She was like, are these not your brushes that you're cleaning? And I, <laughs> if she was kind of looking at me like, you're trying to fool me, you're cleaning your brushes and you're trying to fool me that they're not yours. Um, I was like, oh no, no, um, these are uh, Kelly's. I was just helping her clean them because mine are clean and done. And I, I remember her face was just like so confused. And I thought she was going to give out to me and either say like concern yourself with your own brushes or leave Kelly's brushes alone or just like don't do that because her face was just like looking at me like what? And she just went oh my god and my heart was going like oh shit she's going to give out to me. And she was like oh my god that's so nice you would never get that in any of the Dublin shops. And whether that's true or exaggerated or not I don't know. But we were all so shocked that she said that because we would always do that like if we were finished and someone was cleaning their brushes you just stand with them and clean them and help them. Obviously, until there was a customer, until there was something else to do. And over time, obviously, you'd hear stories from different shops and stuff. And again, it could all be exaggerated, but it seemed that things were a little bit worse in Dublin. So, long story short, my personal experience doesn't really reflect um, some of the really terrible stories that were coming out in this whole Inglot Unveiled situation. But the reason I'm not surprised is because there were different, definite instances where you could kind of see that it wasn't just like internal issues in your store that there were kind of bigger issues in how the brand was being run and there were like general grievances with staff or pay and stuff. But that being said, I haven't worked there for two years and in the two years that I was there, there were a lot of changes because it was a fairly new company. So there were a lot of changes. Um, So I would imagine that things continue to change over the two years that I haven't been there. And I can only hope that things will continue to change for the better. So yeah, that's kind of that and um, people just have just been asking me basically was it really that bad and it's like no but so were they lying or were you really surprised and I was like well no <laughs> but yeah I think I just hope that this um whole controversy sparks some change for the good um yeah that's kind of all I have to say about that <laughs>
And that's all I have to say about that. Um, so, in other news, um, I'm just trying to think what I have coming up. I'm looking at my calendar. I'm going up to Dublin this Sunday. This will be posted the following Tuesday, so I will have been in Dublin on Sunday. We're going up for the Cork match, her, um, Cork are in their hurling semi-final. And actually next week um, on Wednesday, we'll be going back up to Dublin for a soccer match because Chelsea are playing Arsenal in Dublin, which is unusual and different. And we follow Chelsea, so as they're there, we said we'd go up and see them. So we kind of have a few things on this year in Dublin, I, I feel like anyway. I was there, I, oh well, I, was, I went up and down um, twice in May when my mum was here because she flew into Dublin so I went up the night before and then collected her in the morning and then when I was dropping her off again we went up the night before before she flew out the next day and then as I say we were just recently there for the makeup awards and we will be there on Sunday and then we'll be there again next Wednesday and I think in September I'll be there I've a, I'm going to a conference up there in September and then at the end of September again we're going up for um a comedy show one of our favorite comedians Ross Noble is playing there and every time he comes to Ireland we see him so yeah we're kind of up and down to Dublin a lot this year I'm just looking at my calendar any anything I had coming up and one thing that's marked in my calendar on the 14th of August is Jacqueline Hill's um the vault collection with Morphe's coming out on that day so I'll have to be ready to order it because that's actually something that I am super excited about Obviously there's new launches with makeup all the time, but that is one that I am really pumped about. Um, I was really excited about the Lunar Beauty Lace of Drag palette because I liked the color section, I liked the layout, I liked the whole theme, and I am really happy with my purchase. If you didn't see my review, I'll link that up there. And I have really enjoyed the Jaclyn Hill palette, the original palette with Morphe. I liked, again, I liked the colors, I liked the formula. Um, so I'm excited to try these other shadows that are in, are in the same formula, or she said even better. And I like the fact that they're broken down into smaller palettes because I love a big palette that has everything in it. But sometimes that can be kind of overwhelming when you're deciding about a look and stuff. So to have it broken down, but still all be in the one collection is really cool, I think. So I will be ordering that. I haven't really bought much new makeup to chat to you about recently. And um, the makeup that I have on at the moment is one that I just filmed, which was my easy summer makeup for oily skin, which will have gone up last week. So... Again, I'll link that if you want to check that out. So, yeah, I think that's kind of me up to date. <laughs> um, let me know in the comments below if you have any big news or little news or anything that you want to share. And if you enjoy these kind of chatty videos. I know I like watching them, so hopefully you do too. And if you've made it this far, I, you're probably enjoying it. <laughs> At least I hope you are anyway. Um, so yeah, if you are, please do give the video a thumbs up and of course, if you'd like to see more from me, you can subscribe to my channel for free if you want to. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one. Bye guys.